What's up, YouTube? It's Mark here from Next Level Tech and Android TV. Tips. Um, so you got your new Fire TV Stick Lite or Fire TV Stick third generation in the mail today. I launched as of September the 30th and you're looking to learn how to set it up. So let's jump right into it. I just plugged mine in and this is the first time that I plugged it in and I'm going to walk you through the setup guides right now. So obviously once you got the device plugged in, all good to go. One thing I want to mention uh, is that make sure you guys have an Amazon account. Um, if you guys choose to go with Amazon Prime, I will put links to sign up for Amazon Prime. doesn't cost anything additional, but it does help support the channel. So if you are looking to grab Amazon Prime to get all of the features that come with these devices, then make sure to grab that link in the description below. Uh, before you start setting up these devices, make sure that you have your uh, Amazon account uh, handy because you will need it uh, to sign into the device. Okay, so we're going to start off by hitting the home button after we put our batteries into the remote. To sync it, you can see Fire TV, press your play pause button to start. You're going to select your language. I'm in Canada, so I'm selecting Canada. You can select whichever one you prefer. Uh, and then you're going to select your Wi-Fi network. Enter your password. Now just keep note, guys. Uh, you see the buttons at the bottom where it says cancel and connect, as well as um, the little A and the big A and the space and the delete. Those are just telling you there are shortcuts in your remote to help you navigate these. Um, the uh, the A and the little A, those are your capitalization buttons. So you can hit the menu button in your remote, which is the three lines. Uh, so if you can see that there, that's your three lines right there. That'll change your characters from uppercase to lowercase. So if this is the first Fire devices that you've owned, um, these are some really good tips to help you navigating the keyboard on it. Um, next, you can see the space is the fast forward button, delete is rewind, cancel is your back button, and connect, which is usually your, your like your enter to go to the next window or page or whatever it is, is your play pause button. So just gonna finish entering my password for my Wi-Fi, and then we're gonna go from there. So you can see it's checking for updates. One hour later. This is taking a good minute to do the update, which is a lot longer than I'm used to. Two hours later. So like I said, make sure you have your Amazon account uh, handy and then you're just going to go over to your phone and then enter that browser in. So I'm just going to jump over there right now. Uh, let's go to my browser, amazon.imca because I'm in Canada, you guys will be .com. And then once you log into the browser, and you sign in, you just have to enter that code that you see on the screen, uh, right? Yours is obviously gonna be different than mine. And that's it, that's how simple the registration is now. Continue. Uh, this is completely up to you if you wanna save Wi-Fi passwords to the Amazon account or if you want parental controls. And now this is if you want to set up your um, uh, TV controls. So I'm using the Fire TV Stick, not the Fire TV Stick Lite. This is where it's going to ask me the options. Um, I'm not going to really set it up on the, the monitor that I'm using right now. So I just kind of bypass it by saying, yes, it worked because my monitor doesn't have speakers, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> but if you are actually setting it up on the TV that you want, you're going to want to follow all those prompts and it'll walk you through. It takes no time at all. Um, I always pick no thanks for choosing my apps because I sideload all my own apps myself. And you can see it has the original layout. It actually does look pretty good. I'm, I'm using it on a 1080p monitor. These advertisements, I forgot about those. You know, it works pretty fluid. It runs really good so far to the box, but there's nothing installed. Um, so 
we'll walk you through some of the stuff right here. First off, we're going to go to Fire TV. We're going to go to About, and you can see that it is running. It's got 4.94 gigabytes of internal storage out of the box, which is pretty good. But I would bet that there is another update if I click on that. Um, as you can see, it's running Fire OS 7.2.2.3, which I believe the 4K stick is running 7, sorry, 6.0. So this should be running the same uh, Fire OS operating system as the Cube. Uh, I'm not going to check for any more updates right now. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is click on developer options and install apps from unknown sources. So we have to first understand with this one, it's a little bit different than the 4K Fire Sticks. So I'll show you what I mean in, in a minute here. So we will go to our privacies and we're going to turn all this stuff off because we don't need them collecting any kind of data. Don't care. Uh, data monitoring is off. Notification settings. Generally for myself, I like to turn notification settings off. It's completely up to you guys. Feature content. This is the um, video and the audio autoplays on the main home screen. I don't like them. They takes up, you know, resources that I don't need it to do. So I, I turn that off. Okay, next. Um, personally, I go all the way over to display and sounds and I go over to my screensaver and I and I turn why does it keep jumping to the top? I turn this to never because the screensaver runs in the background and it downloads a lot of high resolution uh, photos, videos, and it builds up a lot of cache. It's not needed. Um, and then from here, I would go to my applications, Amazon Photos. I don't use any of this stuff. Don't need it running in the background and taking up resources. Um, this device only has one gig of RAM, so you want to make sure you utilize it the best that you can. I'm going to go back in here. And then I'm going to turn off the guest connections. So those are both off. Game Circle. I don't usually play games on here. It's up to you guys if you want to have Whisper Sync on or not. Um, App Store. This is if you're setting it up for yourself. I usually recommend turning auto updates off. Um, In-app purchases, I always turn off because I don't purchase anything through my Fire Stick. Notifications, I turn off. And then hide cloud apps, I turn off as well. But I'm not going to do that yet. Um, you can manage your install applications. And this is where I'm going to go down. The first one of the first things I do is go to my screensaver and I clear my cache. You can see there was already 100 megabytes in there. Clear data, uh, and then I go back, and you're going to see that we're back at 4.95. For a second there, it was already starting to download a lot of that files for the screensaver, and it took up 100 megabytes. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I will jump to the home screen. And I'm going to go over, I usually have it in my applications here You can see there's, you can usually find it if you've downloaded it before uh, downloader. Um, if you don't have downloader here, then you can either hold down your voice button and you can say downloader or the other way that you can do it is if you go to the top of your screen, to the little search bar button, you can just type in D and then it'll be the second option. Once you type in D, you're going to install downloader. Doesn't take long at all. This device is actually running really snappy so far, but there's nothing installed. Seems to be working pretty good. We're gonna hit open. Look how quickly everything's installing here. So we're gonna hit allow. Okay, now before you go any further, this is what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to hit home. You're gonna have to go to settings. You're gonna have to go to my Fire TV, developer options, install unknown sources, select downloader and turn on. Every every application that you wanted to install applications through it, then you're going to have to turn that on for each one. I'll show you a little bit more about that as we go. So we're going to go well, and from here after I got downloader installed, because sometimes I'll grab it through my cloud. So I'll go over to applications, um, app store, and then hide cloud apps now because I don't need anything else from the cloud. Um, from here, I would go back to downloader and then I will enter get dot file linked dot com. Now this is running the same operating system as the uh, cube. So the install installation from unknown sources, the pro procedures, the same for these fire TV stick, fire TV stick light and the cube. So we're going to hit done and not open. 
And then we're going to delete the APK because we don't need it anymore. Uh, it's taking up unnecessary room. So uh, I will just show you guys from here. If you don't allow uh, apps from unknown sources through an application that's installing other applications, this is the error message you're going to get. So we're going to open up file links. We're going to go into settings and we're going to turn off that one and hit apply. Uh, all that does is it removes one of the pop-ups that people get when they are navigating file link, which is not needed. Uh, file link code for uh, this YouTube channel and Android TV tips is 11039868. You're going to hit next and then continue. All right, so you're going to get the initial pop-up. You're going to hit dismiss. Uh, from here, we're just going to scroll down and I'll show you guys. You can hit fast forward on your remote to kind of jump between the categories. We're going to go all the way down to TV shows and movies and we're going to grab Cinema HD. We're going to hit download. Once it's done downloading, the download button is going to change to a play button. You're going to click on it again and it's going to give you this error message. Uh, for your security, your TV is not allowed to install unknown apps from this source. So from here, you can click on settings. It'll take you to install unknown sources and you just turn on from file linked. So we can hit the back button now and then we can click on it again and it'll launch the installation for cinema. Now keep in mind guys, um, any of the applications that you install that uh, are side loaded and also do auto updates, you're going to want to turn on um, uh, apps from unknown sources for those as well, right? So we're going to hit done. So let's say you want to grab, you know, BTV and let's say you want to grab uh, Film Plus. Uh, let's see, you want to get Media Box or Mega Box. Uh, we'll grab Media Box 2. And De Nova. Typhoon. Watched. Zinni, now those are all TV shows and movie apps. Uh, we're going to grab DNS changer Lily to block the ad ads in those app, um, applications. Uh, going down, we're going to grab Smart YouTube and the Amazon Smart YouTube TV bridge. We're going to keep going. You know, I'm going to grab that too for myself. Uh, YouTube Kids. Personally, I like VLC Player, but there's also MX Player and EUMC if you like those. And then if you like anime, I recommend Crunchyroll TV and Fire Anime. Uh, you can hit the menu button on your remote, and then you can sort it by downloading and downloaded. And then you can just start installing your apps like this. All right, so we just finished installing some TV shows, some movie applications, uh, an ad blocker, uh, ad for YouTube, um, uh, anime applications. So we're going to hit done. Um, just a habit of mine, even though uh, filing typically does this, I end up clearing all the things that I downloaded anyways. Uh, so we're going to go back. And then, you know what? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check settings just to show you guys. Uh, applications, manage install applications. Um, I'm still running at four gigs of free space. Like that's impressive for sure. Um, I have so much free space still available. Really cool. Um, so the next thing I'm going to show you guys is we're going to go over to Fire TV, developer options, install apps from unknown sources, and everything here that is listed is all the things that we installed. Um, so right off the bat, I know that BTV has automatic updates, so I want to make sure that those can be installed. Um, Zindy TV does, uh, Smart YouTube does, Typhoon does, Nova does, uh, Film Plus does. Uh, media box I'm not sure but you can turn that on this one pretty much everything that we just installed third party as long as they're trusted just turn them on so that they can install their automatic updates uh, yeah so we're gonna go from there you can see we hold on our home button on our remote and go to applications there's all the apps that we installed. So just like we were having some of the issues on the cube, some of the icons are not appearing. So you will have to either change the launcher or or something along those lines if you wanna see what these icons are. I mean, you can always move them to front and then hit the home button on your remote. And then as you're navigating, you can see at the top of the screen, this is Fire Anime and TV Mate. So those are not showing up with icons 
on here. So if those are applications that you use, just keep that in mind. Um, as beside that though, you can go into any one of these applications that we installed like Cinema HD, and you can start to navigate and find content to watch. So we're gonna go to accept and just personal preference of mine. I like to go to the menu and settings, and then I change default play action to play and poster side size to medium just looks better and then you would just pick your season your episode hit play and then it's going to start looking for sources I see it's finding a lot of sources generally with the free links if you're not using real the bread all the bread or premiumized uh, you want to be looking for uh, hls links which are these down here or cdn and those will generally play the best that are free um, because th there can be inconsistencies on the hoster side. So if you have issues with any of these top ones here that are listed as 1080p or 720, try HLS or CDN. But uh, so overall, that's how you uh, sideload uh, the new Fire TV Stick and Fire TV Stick Lite and my initial impressions. Uh, it does look like it takes a few seconds longer to uh, get the initial updates going but once you're in the device is snappy and it seems to be um it seems to be you know um optimizing its internal storage pretty good after installing a bunch of those applications and i still have over four gigs of free space that's kind of impressive to me. I'm happy to see that. Uh, it means that you have more room for, you know, cache files, more things to run in the background. Um, you can see right off the bat natively on the bottom right there, it says no USB storage detected. So it is OTG compatible. All right, guys, that was, that was a really quick um, first initial impressions of the software, um, uh, of how sideloading it goes, um, and uh, how to sideload some of the stuff. So I hope that really helped you guys. If my videos, um, you enjoyed any of them, or if they helped you at all, all I ask is that you share it with one family member or a friend, and make sure to come out and join the community over on Telegram. Uh, this has been Mark from Next Level Tech, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace. Next level.